I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to set up a merch store for your YouTube channel. So you can start selling merch right away. And look, you do not have to have a thousand subscribers. You do not need 4,000 hours of watch time because you can put links in your description that will send people over to your merch store. And the best part about it is everything that I'm getting ready to show you is 100% free. And we're starting right now. For this demo, we are going to be using Spreadshop.com. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to Spreadshop.com so you can follow along. And then from there, you wanna click on Open a Spreadshop. Shop. Here, you fill out all of your information to register your shop. Once you have all of your information filled out, then you click on Get Started Now. Now, the very first part of this process, of course, is creating a product, because if you don't have any products to sell, then, of course, you don't have anything to sell. Once you land on this page, if you don't have any designs yet, then what you need to do is you need to actually make designs. So there are apps that you can do this with, or you can also go to a place like placeit.net, go under the design options, and then go down to shirt designs. And then by doing that inside of here, you can make shirts based off of some of the designs that they already have. Just pick something that would be a good fit for your community or the look that you're trying to create with your merch. On here, they have some free options and they have some paid options as well. Of course, if you want the free options, all you have to do is type in free t-shirt design and then they are going to show you their free options and then you can customize them and then it doesn't cost you anything to create or download those. So once you have the actual design that you're gonna use, you come back here and you click on the browse option and you find it on your computer or on your phone and then you upload it directly into there. So once you have it uploaded, you're going to see a display that looks something like this. If you upload a bunch at one time, then of course you're going to see this filled out with additional designs also. But for this example, I'm just showing you how to put all this together. So we're just going to focus on the one right now. But what we're going to do is once you do see your design here, you want to click on this pencil icon. This is going to take you to a page that is filled with a bunch of different options that you can display your design on. So little details that are really important to keep an eye on is you can see down here, since I'm using a white graphic for this, it's obviously not going to fit well in the coffee cup. So right out of the gate, I'm going to go ahead and click on this X. And then now it's not going to be available on a coffee cup. But if I want to make a coffee cup available, then in that case, I would just need to make the same version and just make it in black or another color. But the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna go through and you wanna look and see exactly what it is that you want to offer. So for example, this thing right here with the different colored sleeves, I'm gonna turn that one off. Um, I'm also going to turn off the bag in this situation. And I'm gonna leave the water bottle and I'm gonna leave the apron as well, um, just because you know those would be applicable to this statement here, which is nothing works as good as work works. <laughs> but another thing that you need to know is in order to actually mess with the design, what you wanna do is you wanna click on the pencil icon for whichever options that you want to use. So here we're gonna pick the men's premium t-shirt. And then here we get to start doing some fun things. So right out of the gate, I can click on this and I can make it bigger. Um, if I would like so that it can fill up a little bit more space. Um, I can also, if I'm in here working with the design, trying to find a nice place to put it, I can center it vertically or horizontally or both if I would like as well. And another thing that is also really important here is the colors that you are displaying in your shop. So for example, I like to show and offer darker vibes with the merch that I have. So because of that, my display colors are typically something that's a little bit darker like this charcoal gray example. Now, even though I do have merch available in different colors, I also go through and I exclude colors that either I don't like or just colors that I don't think would be a great fit for this design. So for example, I'm gonna click on the white option here because with the white text, it's not gonna work on the white and I know that. Same exact thing for some of these lighter colors. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn some of those off as well so that I can have this white really standing off on colors that people you know, would actually wear for one and colors that you know just looks good with the white text. Once you have that part sorted, all you have to do is go up and click apply up in the top right hand corner and then that one is good to go and then you repeat that process for each of the merch designs that you want to offer once you have all of those worked out then the next thing that you want to do is you want to go up here and you want to click on next up here in the very top and then here you optimize your titles your descriptions and tags kind of like you do on youtube already so here i'm just going to put nothing works like work works nothing works as good as work works i'm going to add a description and for the tags i have a tip for you so what you want to think about is for whatever your merch says or whatever your merch shows when you're doing your tags don't just think that you are optimizing for the words or the graphic itself also think who would be a good fit for this so for this particular statement i'm going to use entrepreneur um, i'm going to use self-employed i'm going to use youtuber because you know all of those are going to be a great fit for this. And then I'm going to add a broader tag, motivation and motivational for the sake of, you know, just having an opportunity to reach into people that are looking for motivational things as well. Once you have all that filled out, the next thing that you want to do is you want to come up here to the top right and click create. 
When you click that, you're gonna get this additional dialog box. So you want to go ahead and click on continue. Now we get into the fun part. This is where you get to optimize the actual store itself and get to design kind of what your store looks like. So here, what I'm going to do is of course, for the logo, I'm just going to go ahead and use a shop name, but you can also upload an image as well if you would like. And they give you very specific information on how big your image needs to be so that it fits well in the store. And I'm also going to change this green here to a red for the buttons and for any alerts that that happen to pop up on the screen just because it grabs a little bit more attention. Now, if we scroll down, you're gonna see what the page looks like here, but we're gonna make this look cooler in just a minute. I'm gonna show you how to do that. But for right now, we're just gonna click on save and then I'm gonna click on continue again. Now, even though we went through that process of clicking on save and uh, you know getting it to where the store could be published right now. I'm actually gonna click on this little icon down here in the bottom left-hand corner, and I'm gonna pull the shop up again so we can get into some real customization here. So if you look under the appearance tab, one thing that you're going to see is you're gonna see themes. Now, if we go to select a theme, depending on the type of content that you make and the type of merch that you're gonna have in your store, they have you know a nice handful of really cool designs that you can use here. So I like the black, red, and white look. So for my example, I'm gonna click on this one right here. I'm just gonna click on select. And now, even though I still have some adjustments to make, now as I scroll down the page, you can see the display looks a little bit different. I have this darker footer down here in the website as well. So we're gonna keep working on this. I'm gonna click on appearance again. And then I'm gonna come down to colors and fonts. So once again, I'm going to have to change this to red for the buttons in this since the theme defaulted it back to that original color. And just as a heads up, if you want to, you can also change the fonts um, you know, for your headings, for your subtext as well. Um, but in this case, I think it looks great. So I'm just going to leave it how it is by default. But I'm gonna go back to appearance to work on some other things. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do down here is I'm going to click the search field because I want the search field to also pull up up here for anybody that is looking for specific things. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to model images. So if we click on that, um, you can see right now how on the products, you know, we just see the actual products themselves. But if I want to show people wearing the stuff, then in that case, I can turn the model images on. And when I turn that on, you can see now there's actual people that show up here wearing the merch as well. So the people can just kind of get an idea of what it might look like on an actual person as well. So one thing that you can do here is you can experiment with this and you can see if there's a difference, you know, if you have the model images versus if you just have the merch, see if, you know, your audience responds to one over the other in a, in a better way. Way. But in my case, I'm just gonna turn that off because I wanna focus on the design itself. Now I'm gonna go back to appearance here. And since I already have the search turned on, the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to click on apply changes just to make sure that everything is saved. And then I'm gonna go back into shop settings. Now, there's a few things that I really wanna bring to your attention here, but first we're gonna go into general. And in general, this is where you just have some information about your store. So in my case, I'm just going to have spreadshirt.com slash tuber tools in this example. Now, the one that I actually use is called Nick Nimmin, of course. And um, I'm just setting this one up just because I had this email as an additional email. So I figured I would set it up that way so that I can take you through the process of setting this thing up. Um, but my store is already set up and I'll put a link to that in the description so you can see what that looks like. But here, what you wanna think about when you are naming your store and when you're doing all of this stuff for SEO is that this is going to be something that can help you show up in Google when people are looking for the merch that you have. So here, I'm just gonna put um, Tuber Tools. But what I would really wanna do here is I would wanna do something like, uh, you know, YouTube, T-shirts, and hoodies, you know, something like that. Because you can see here in this little preview, they show you what it looks like when it shows up in Google. So because of that, I wanna make sure that I'm being very, mindful about the words that I'm using here for the names, for the description. And now that I've changed all that up, you can see here that I've got the URL. I've got this right here as, you know, just a defining thing in the actual headline. And then of course I have a little bit more information here about what it is that's actually here in this shop. And then once I have that done, I'm gonna click on apply changes again. Then I'm gonna go back. Now this next one here, your legal info, some things that I wanna bring to your attention is when we click on this, um, one of the things that can happen is when you put your phone number and all that in here, your phone number can show up. So make sure that you're using something that doesn't go directly to your cell phone. Make sure that you're using like a Google voice number or a Skype number or something like that so that you don't you know, end up publicly posting your phone number here. Um, same exact thing with your email. Make sure that you set up a different email account for this specifically so that the only 
thing that would be publicly displayed on here that anybody would be able to reach you from would be that email, but it wouldn't go and pollute your main emails if you start getting a lot of sales. And then of course, for the other legal information, it's important to check you know, with your local laws and all of that stuff just to make sure that you're compliant here also. Now I could click on the activate shop, but we're not gonna do that yet because we're still you know, getting everything together. Next up, we're gonna click on the page settings. Now, once we're on page settings, now one thing that's really cool here is this display that we see, you can actually change things that are showing up here. So for example, where it says create your own thing, if I wanted to take this off, then all I have to do is I find the customized tool banner, which is this right here. And then I come down here, click on the pencil, and then I just slide this saying that I don't want it to show. And then now if I scroll down, that's gone. And then I can click back to the start page. And then for any of these other things, you know, I can move these around as much as I would want to, to make sure that I'm focusing the right products in the right places on here, just like you would do on your YouTube channel homepage. Next up, we're gonna click on the product detail page. Now with the product detail page, this is what people see when they actually are researching to see more information about the product. This is where they can add it to the cart as well. So what you can do here is you can turn on to show additional design suggestions, to show, to show product ratings if you would like, um, if you have a lot of people getting your merch. And by doing this, you start to create you know some feedback where people talk about quality and that sort of thing. Um, you also, for the product detail, details here. Um, you know, it helps people know about sizing and all of those types of things as well. But of course you can customize this to show those things or not based on your preferences. Now, another thing inside of the page settings is they also have the customize tool. And with the customize tool, that allows people to be able to make some modifications to what it is that you're doing, you know, mess with colors, that kind of stuff. Um, for this, if you leave it on, you will most likely get more sales. I know the the, sh the shirts that I have this on on, um, those typically will have people do some type of modification to them before they actually make the purchase. So I recommend that you leave this customization option on. If you click into topics, what topics is, is you wanna think of topics like categories. So the way that you would use this is, let's say for example, in my case, um, just so you know, if you're watching my content, you might be familiar with my videos. So in my case, maybe I would have one for live streamers would be a topic. YouTubers would be another topic. Maybe podcasters would even be another topic. So as people were hitting the store, they could go directly to the things that matter to them. And then of course, just like on YouTube, they also have an about us page as well. And you can fully fill this out just to give some context about you know what it is that has driven you to create the store or maybe how having that store benefits you or how getting that merch makes people a deeper side of your community. Anything like that is perfectly okay. Now, one more thing that I wanna bring to your attention really quick in the page settings is if you click into the page settings and you go to the start page, you can see right here how we have this big image showing up right here. And this image right now just has the spread shop logo in the background. In order to change that, in order to change any of these actually, if you click into the pencil icon, it allows you to make some modifications to the area. So here I'm gonna click on the teaser which is that area. And then you'll see here how they already have the spread shop logo in the background. If I click on this, then you can see it changes to a dark version, but of course you can also upload your own. And all you have to do for that is find the image on your computer. And then once you have the image in there, then just click apply. And then now you can see that I changed that to my Niminati grid that I have in the background so that it, you know, it's on brand so that everything looks okay. Now, other things that you can do here as well is if you want to have a photo of you in here, you can do that. For example, this is the one that I'm currently using for mine. And on here, you know, I have my my picture up here and then I have this where it kind of looks like my YouTube header and then as you scroll down then you get to see some you know different options that I have the designs that I have and things like that as well so you can really personalize this other things is let's say that you have a catchphrase or something like that and that catchphrase is something that you could cleverly work into your shop now button if so then in that case, they also allow you to modify the shop now button as well. So you can see right here, how I just changed this one to show more Niminati merch. And then they also let you link this to wherever you want. So for example, if your audience is primarily women, then you could have it just going to the women's products. If it's primarily men, you could have it just going to the men's products. You could have it going just to accessories if you don't want people to pick up shirts, but you want them to get coffee cups and things like that. And that customization goes to all of the little details here. So you can also see where this one says product preview. If we come over to product preview over here, we click on that pencil, then I can also change that to Nick Nimmin's merch previews, or you could make it for your channel name or for your audience if you have like a squad name or something like that too. And once you have all of this customization worked out, the next thing that you gotta do is you gotta make the shop public so that you can start driving people to it. Just click on launch shop. And then you're gonna have to fill out this information as well just because they need it on their end. 
Once you fill that out, you're going to get this additional box to where you can just visit the shop. And then they also just to help you celebrate your grand opening by giving you 15% off for your audience. And just so you know, because I get this question a lot, people always ask, when should I start a merch store? Well, I believe that you should start it right away. So as your YouTube channel grows, that the things that you're promoting will help your income grow along with your YouTube channel. And if you wanna learn even more ways that you can make money with your YouTube channel, click into this playlist right here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.